Hello and welcome back to World of Warcraft and another challenge mode dungeon run. My name's Lumen and right now I've got a gold run on Scarlet Monastery for you guys. This one was a bit of a shocker to us, to the whole group, because it was a lot easier than we had heard it would be. Everyone was telling us that this was going to be one of the toughest ones. We heard all sorts of horror stories about groups wiping on this for ages, but we ended up doing this on our fourth or fifth attempt. And everyone was obviously just like super happy about that. This was one of the quickest ones that we learned to do and then actually got done on gold. All that said, it can still be challenging in much the same way that Scarlet Halls was challenging because some of the trash is really difficult. Now, when you start off here, I think most of your DPS would probably want to pre-pot. They'd want to use their DPS potion before running in. So just before you start the instance so they can take this pile of corpses down really quickly. Along with the pile of corpses, there's a Scarlet Flamethrower and two Scarlet Centurions. The Centurions don't do very much. The Flamethrower does a lot of damage. It does a cone attack that you should probably stay at max range for. If you're a melee character, it's a little tougher. You know, it's not quite as easy. You'll still take quite a bit of damage from it. You can, however, as with most of these mobs and packs that you encounter, just disable them as much as possible. Keep the stuns going. Once they're about to go down, you should probably start moving already. I think I could have saved a couple of seconds by just starting to run down the way already. You want to try and stick close enough to the left hand wall that we just ran by there but not too close to aggro the zombies inside and then as the tank you can just run over here and try pull both packs of frenzied spirits and clump them up once your dps and healers are ready don't rush too much because if you rush too much if you try to do everything too fast you'll make mistakes and well mistakes cost you runs you're going to want to try and get aggro on all of these and then pull them in to a big clump so that the AoE can hit them all. I think I quite honestly did a terrible job at it, but the rest of the group was on the ball. And the idea with this is that the more damage you do to them, the more they attack for, but the slower they move. So you can just kite them around. It doesn't take very long. And that, I think, is the reason that you actually kill them, because it's a good 15 enemies by the time you get to the first boss done. Now, Thalnos, this is where we use our time warp. He has a couple of interesting abilities that you've got to watch out for. Firstly, he summons Fallen Crusaders. They put a stack in debuff on the tank that just deals a lot of shadow damage. It is actually dispellable, if I'm not mistaken, so you can get it off there if you want. He also casts Spirit Gale, which targets one of the party members and then deals a good amount of damage to them, but at the same time also deals damage to everyone around them. So that can be really, really deadly. It can also be interrupted, so you should probably do that when you can. Then the only other two abilities, Empowered Zombie and Evict Soul. Evict Soul makes a copy of sorts of one of your party members, and then you just gotta kill it quickly. It deals quite a bit of damage if it's just left unchecked. And the Empowered Zombie is basically just a bigger Fallen Crusader. It hits kind of hard, but it's not too difficult to just tank. You just leave it. You leave it up until you kill the boss, then it'll despawn. It's no problem. It will unfortunately not count towards your enemies killed, so there's no point in actually taking them down. So what I did was I just spammed Holy Wrath as often as I possibly could, which was so cool in this instance once again. It is such a great ability. Stunned them for like five seconds, then they just stand there like fools. It's not bad. Not bad at all. Once we take Thalnos down, we move straight into the cathedral proper and... This is where things got a little bit more difficult, and this is where our run varied from some other runs. A little bit more difficult because, once again, like in Scarlet Halls, these big Scarlet pulls are really, really tough to deal with. You want to have your DPS, again, just stunning, disabling, and interrupting everything they can. The main abilities to look out for here are Purifying Flames and Flame Strike, and then also the heals are obviously something that you want to interrupt if you can, but... With us, we just used Ring of Frost, Shadow Fury, I would have used Blinding Light if it wasn't on cooldown, and all the other abilities like that. I even popped Devotion Aura on this specific pool here because it does soak up quite a bit of damage if you can get it up at the right time. This is just one of those big chaotic pulls that you've got to learn to deal with in challenge modes because there are a couple of them and they are, in most cases, what make these instances tough. Now... We did our run a little bit different from how other people do them, mainly because once again we didn't have a speed boost in our party. A lot of people skip this pack over here and they start their invis run right at this door. But we actually decided to kill this pack because it didn't take very long, just three mobs can keep them mostly disabled, interrupted for the time that you're busy fighting them. And once they're down, we can make some good progress into the courtyard and only then use 
our invis pots to get to where we need to go not too difficult and at this point already we got so many enemies killed before we even get into the last room that it's not even a problem so seeing that we are already a good five minutes in our potions should be off cooldown although i didn't use a strength potion at the start which i probably should have done you know i wasn't min max in this as much as i possibly could have but regardless use the invis pot to get all the way up into the fountain and clear of the mobs that would be behind me right now they stand in back there attacking the training dummies or something. Those are the ones that we needed to try and get past. We couldn't do it without a speed boost without killing that previous pack, so we killed the pack. Brother Koloff is the next boss up. He is kind of easy if you understand how he works. He does three things. He does Blazing Fists, Firestorm Kick, which you can see him doing right now, and then when he gets below 50% life, he starts putting fire down on the ground. So the way we set this up was, we've got the red cross here where I'm going to be tanking him, and I leave enough room for me to move out of the way of Blazing Fists. He will stand still, he will do something like Fists of Fury that the monk has, and it will just do damage in a cone in front of him, but he will keep you selected, so if you turn towards your DPS, then it will damage them. The Firestorm Kick, he does on the furthest party member away from him. So we put a marker at the back, which is the blue marker, where our mage Gemma went to stand. So she goes and chills on the blue marker while waiting for the firestorm kick. Then he will always teleport to her to do it. The blue marker is just out of range of the ranged DPS. They can keep damaging the boss while he does his firestorm kick. And he will just run straight back to me, all the while putting fire on the ground, like I said. He also has a stack in buff on himself that gives him 10% extra fire damage every 10 seconds, so you want to kill him as quick as you possibly can. Now unfortunately you're obviously not going to have something like time warp ready here yet, you're going to have that just in time for the last boss, but you should still, with just a reasonable amount of DPS, be able to take him down. I think the main problem that we had on this was just getting the mechanics right, getting our DPS, which was our mage Gemma, in that position every time and then getting her out in time. It's just a couple of things that you basically need to learn, and I guess it'll take one or two tries to get it right. Also, when you pull the boss, you got to make sure he's exactly in the middle, else he might bring the fanatics with. Same goes for when you run through here. The easiest way to do this run is you stand on the triangle of the fountain at the back, you aim for the exact middle point of the stairs, and then you run straight at it. Then you can't possibly pull the mobs on the sides. In this room, I think that you got to just take it as fast as you possibly can based on how good or, I don't want to say bad, but how good your group is, let's just leave it at that, okay? So if you can handle more mobs in one single pull, you pull more mobs. I have seen people doing challenge modes here where they pull literally the entire room and they actually still survive just because they got a good stun and disable rotation. They got good interrupts and so on and so forth. We had more than enough time, so we decided to take it easy. We didn't want to pull too many at the same time, and it worked out for us. You know, I've got a lot of cooldowns up, ready and waiting, although I still take some damage here. I have those cooldowns to guarantee that we don't wipe, that we don't die. Again, for me, it's just things like Devotion Aura, things like my stuns, my Blinding Light, and all that other good stuff. You'll see I used most of that here, mainly because you want to make sure you get these down smoothly. It's a really bad feeling going all the way through the instance, getting to this final room, and then wiping on trash here. But that is, again, what makes this instance and Scarlet Halls quite difficult, the trash. The bosses themselves are quite easy to understand. Once you've done them once or twice, it's not too bad. So we just kept pulling all of these. And the reason you kill all of them is not because you need to get a mob count up, but because they will all aggro when you attack the boss. As a paladin here, one of the most useful tools ever is just Avenger Shield. You know, it's so nice to be able to use that on the mobs that are cast in spells off in the distance to silence them and bring them to you. Also, obviously, interrupt them, stop that spell from casting. It is just such a great instance as a paladin tank. I gotta say, one of my favorites. Because there were only, I think, four mobs left around the middle of the room and on this side, we decided to pull them all together. The DPS pulled the two on the right-hand side, I pulled the Judicator and the Zealot on the left-hand side. And after this pull, there's only one more pack which is mostly just fodder. You'll see now, they're pretty quick to take down. I do think, like I said before, if you are more comfortable with handling the trash, if you've got a, a better class setup in your group, then you can probably clear this trash much quicker. Sure, the bosses and stuff will still take the same amount of time, but in most cases, if you can make up a lot of time on the trash pulls, then you'll have more leeway on the bosses, which is always good. So back there, there's just 
one zealot and then a bunch of initiates it's super easy to take on they smite which does a lot of damage in one quick burst you know your tank should be able to survive that and i guess the only other way this could be a catastrophe is if they all get heals off at the same time or if your dps just pull aggro on one or two of them and then take the smites instead of the tank taking the smites i don't know we haven't had very many problems with that group specifically. Now, however, with the final mob down, we start on Commander Durand, and once he goes down, obviously, White Man joins him, and then you fight them both together. Same as the heroic version, much the same as the old Scarlet Monastery. Durand here has two abilities, Flash of Steel and Dash and Strike. Both are almost identical, and this is probably one of the easiest boss encounters in the game. If you just have one capable interrupter in your team, you'll see in a moment why. But Durand, all you gotta do with him is just stack up. And the reason you do that is because when he does dash in strike or flash of steel, then he will run around to the actual party members that are around the room. And if they spread out more, it'll take longer and they won't be able to actually do damage while he's running around. So you just stack for him, simple as that, and he should go down reasonably quickly. You can see he's not even doing a real huge amount of damage. At this point, I think I remember us already cheering on Skype because we had done it. This was the easy part. Once he goes down, White Mane comes running out. She has two abilities which are kind of important to interrupt. One is Mass Resurrection and the other one is Dominate Mind. Mass Resurrection should always take priority, but you should with, you know, three DPS in your group be able to interrupt them all just fine. Dominate Mind has a very quick cast time, so sometimes it's a little bit difficult to interrupt it, but we did get each and every single one of them interrupted, and once she goes down, then she will resurrect her fallen companion here on the floor, Commander Durand. She puts you to sleep, she resurrects him, and then you gotta fight them both at the same time. Then, all the rules apply that replied before, so you need to stack up for Durand, you need to interrupt all the same spells on White Mane, and then you should probably focus White Mane down first, just because it will make your life a whole lot easier if you don't need to interrupt every five seconds because that can get a little bit painful. Duran does do quite a bit of damage here. You can see the power word barrier went down. I used Ardent Defender. I used Guardian of Ancient Kings. I did not want to die right at the end here. We just popped Time Warp there, so the damage is obviously going to increase quite a bit now. And we're sitting with over a minute to spare to just take these two down and then be done with it. Now, if I'm not mistaken, we finished this with around 30 seconds to spare. We could probably have done it a little bit quicker if our DPS just focused a little more on White Mane alone, because you can see Durand had taken a lot of damage by the time this was done. He was already halfway down. If you focus one of them down, single target first, then focus the other one down, it does go a little bit quicker. It obviously also, like I said, makes your life a little easier because you don't need to interrupt White Mane the whole time, which is a real pain. We did this with a rogue in the run after this, and he was really good at just interrupting everything the whole time. I don't know if rogues just by default have more interrupts or quicker interrupts, but he did that amazingly well. And there you go, Durand goes down, and we got our gold. You can see that we got our bronze and our silver there as well, and that's why the big lol came out from Zohi there. <laughs> it was a bit of a shocker, because we only got to this final encounter once or twice, and then by the time we were about to kill them, we just reset, because we knew you know, we knew we were just a couple of seconds off, and we knew we could easily do it, so we did it. I think while there is some truth to this being one of the harder challenge mode dungeons, it's not that bad. It's not as bad as some people make it out to be. The trash is difficult. You need to keep up quite a brisk pace to make it with the timer, but it's not that bad. That again is, however, that you can check back here soon for the final in this series, which is on Siege. It was an interesting one to be sure. You'll see. Give it a like, share it, and do all that other good stuff. Most importantly though, happy gold run on Scarlet Monastery. Happy that.